Some people think that uh, the present financial crisis has undermined the case for the free market. But I think this is empirically false position. What I have in mind is that there are many empirical studies which suggest that the ultimate deeper reasons for the present financial crisis, as well as for the previous financial crisis, are the wrong state interventions or public interventions. In the case of uh, the crisis which erupted in the US, it was excessively easy monetary policy of Fed. This is the public institution. The politicization of housing credit by means of Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac and direct political pressures. And some other uh, public errors which have led to financial crisis in the US. And this financial crisis in the US has spread to other countries. But countries which suffer the most have their own wrong policies. Look at Greece. <laughs> Greece does not show that free markets failed, but governments have failed by uh, pursuing expansionary policies uh, for a long time. If you look at Ireland or Spain or Britain, this is the case of the housing boom, which was tolerated uh, too much and fueled by, to some extent, uh, low interest rates. So empirically based conclusion in my mind is that uh, deeper financial crises are caused by wrong public interventions, and reform should look at how to reduce the scope of these wrong final public interventions which bring about or contribute to the financial crisis. And, this, and in this regard, I think the job is not finished. The present financial crisis has not uh, undermined, has not uh, shown that we need more state intervention, even in the financial sector. We need less, we need better, but certainly no more. And there is nothing in the present financial crisis which would suggest, empirically speaking, that we need more and not less state intervention in other sectors of the economy. I don't think Europe needs, European Union needs new grand visions without substance. <laughs> this would not solve concrete problems. I think, first of all, Europe needs implementation of the agreements which have been already concluded. Take single market. This has been extremely important reform. I think it was the most important reform for economic growth and dynamics of Europe, but the single market is not completed, especially in the area of services. The service directive as proposed by Commissioner Bonkenstein was watered down in the European Parliament. So we need to, we need to go further. Second, said, uh, Europe, members of the European Union differ the economic performance, and uh, which suggests that there are differences in national policies. And it is national policies sometimes it should be improved. For example, the Greece's problems are not created in Brussels. They have been created in Athens. Perhaps Greece's problem was tolerated to one, but ultimately it's up to the Greeks to solve their, their problems. In Portugal, they have allowed uh, years of fiscal expansion they thought that uh, euro is just a free lunch. Euro is not a free lunch. Euro gives certain opportunities for countries which uh, pursue good policies. But if they pursue bad policies, meaning uh, structural rigidities or fiscal expansion, then their position may be worse <laughs> than outside euro because uh, they would be out of easy options. I am not saying that countries should abandon Euro. No, I think Euro has been so far rather a success. I only need that if you enter a certain club, you have to observe the rules. And to observe the rules of uh, the Eurozone is uh, having fiscal discipline and having very, very flexible economy, especially of labor markets, and there are these reforms which are crucial for the success of the respective countries of the Eurozone and also of the European Union.